Hello again, this is Paradox. Do you like going pretty fast at a reasonable price? Well, today I will teach you how. Oriented Carryable Object any object that Link can pick up and which snaps to a specific orientation above Link's head when doing so. Remember this definition, it's important. We have a bunch of examples of these in the game, things like fans, emitters, cannons, and even many non-Zonai devices such as shrine crystals and even Mogawak batteries. You will find that most carryable objects are in fact OCOs. As a general rule, if it isn't spheroidal and can be carried, it's an OCO. Substrate. The long object used to project Link into the air during a recall launch. Often this role is filled by a large plank, but sometimes you can also use random shrine things. Wings are also pretty nice because you can carry them around in your inventory. Basically, if it is long, lightweight, and flat, it should work pretty well as a substrate. If you have access to reasonably flat ground, a suitable OCO, and a good substrate, then you can perform an OCO launch. Now, before we get started, keep in mind that OCO launches are not a single technique, but an entire class of them. Depending on which OCO substrate pair you use, you will need to tweak your approach, sometimes significantly. That's why this tutorial is a part 1, there will hopefully be more parts later. Today I will teach you the most basic form of this technique, and the first one that I ever performed for myself, the Fan Plank OCO Launch. Although not the most powerful, I think this version of the OCO launch is the easiest to teach and learn, and therefore a good starting point for a total beginner. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. Find yourself some flat ground to practice on. I like to experiment by the Kyonosis Shrine in the Castletown Ruins because the ground is flat and there are a bunch of free planks to use here. Okay. Now that you're situated, get ready to learn some stuff. This is a somewhat technical process, and I'm assuming that you are a total beginner here. I ask for your patience over the upcoming section. We're going to start basic and boring, and work our way up to a full launch. Take out a fan, pick it up, and let Link hold it for a while. Now, take a good long look at it. Pan the camera around, seriously, take in every detail you can. Look at which way the blades are pointing, the same direction as Link. Notice the way that the Zonai broomstick emblem is facing, with the bristles pointing downward. Whatever asymmetry helps you to understand exactly how this fan is oriented, make note of it. Burn these details into your mind. This is the fan's default orientation, the angle it takes on when picked up by Link. Now set it down and use Ultra Hand or Gravity to topple it over. Now watch the fan closely as you pick it up again. Did you see how it quickly snapped into its default orientation? Well, that angular snap is the key to everything and what makes OCOs special. If we're smart, we can manipulate that snap into doing useful things for us. Set the fan down again. Now, use Ultra Hand to flip it like this. The broomstick symbol should now be facing Link with the bristles pointing upward. If you just picked it up and set it down, then this will require rotating it four times with D-pad down. If you just took it out of your inventory and haven't picked it up yet, it is facing the wrong way, so you will need to turn it so that it's pointing away from Link before flipping it over. This can be done with D-pad right four times, followed by D-pad down four times. Either way, make sure your fan is in this orientation, again with the blades facing Link and the broomstick bristles pointing upwards. Now if we pick it up, the fan will be forced to make a rapid 180 degree snap in order to assume its default position in Link's hands. This is where the power comes from for our recall launch. If we can attach something to the fan and recall it, it will reverse that rapid snap with the attachment still connected. So that's it then, right? Now all we need to do is just attach a plank and recall the fan and launch, right? Well, no actually. You see, in picking up the fan, we just passed the first stumbling block where you may cause the launch to fail if you're not being careful. If you didn't pay attention and already attached your plank, your launch attempt may already be doomed. Let's talk about Snap Polarity.
This is the model of the fan. Everyone admire it, you wouldn't believe how many skills I needed to learn to represent it this way. Now, let's put it in the orientation it was in before Link picked it up. The green arrow represents Link's line of sight. I'm going to show a slowed down version of the pickup animation so that we can make some sense of things. Now, let's press A to pick up the fan. What I haven't told you until now is that the fan can rotate one of two ways in order to snap into its default orientation. It can roll forward like this, or it can roll backwards like this. The reason for this is that the game tries to swing the fan across the shortest possible angular path to take on its default orientation. Since our angle is right around the 180 degree mark, this results in the slightest subtleties in terrain and positioning, determining which direction the fan will flip. I have decided to call this effect Snap Polarity, and it is a fundamental problem with most OCO launches that we will need to find a solution for. You see, depending on which rotation you get, that is, whether the fan rolls forward away from Link or backwards towards Link, you will need to attach your substrate on the correct side of the fan so that it'll move the right way when the fan is recalled. A forward roll means attach it to the front of the fan where the blades are, and a back roll means attach it to the back of the fan where this large bump is. If you misread this information and attached your substrate to the wrong side of the fan, the recalled fan will attempt to send the substrate into the ground rather than upwards, causing it to detach and ruin your day. Thankfully, we have several options to deal with this problem. Our first option is to sacrifice some speed. If you want, you can rotate the fan only 135 degrees by pressing D-pad down three times instead of four. This will make the fan do a front roll every time, making the rotation deterministic, but there are a couple of drawbacks. First, as soon as you let go with Ultra Hand, you'll want to press A as soon as possible to pick up the fan quickly, otherwise it'll just fall flat. More importantly, since the fan is swinging over a decreased angle, you will lose quite a decent fraction of your launch speed. So, this approach isn't ideal, but it can technically solve our problem. Our second option is having a well-trained eye. You see, when you pick it up, the fan actually gives us instructions as to where to attach the plank. It's just that you only get 5 frames to read them. Here are your instructions. <laughs> Did you catch that? Let me repeat it slowed down. <laughs> that was a back roll. In the footage, I correctly noticed this and attached the plank to the back of the fan accordingly. This later resulted in a successful launch. So, as you can see, it is possible to see which way the fan is rotating. It's a bit difficult, but by practicing a bit, you can train your eye to consistently recognize which direction the fan flipped, and then attach the substrate to the corresponding side. It helps to orient the camera to view the fan from the side before picking it up. Also, you can try to predict it based upon the terrain. If Link and the back of the fan are pointing downhill, then you'll get a front flip. Uphill and you'll get a back flip. However, this isn't super reliable because by the time the terrain is hilly enough for you to predict the rotation, it's probably too hilly for the launch to behave well. You'll get undesirable effects like the fan tipping over and the plank being obstructed by stuff. As I said before, flat terrain is best. So, with all of that said, there is one more option for addressing snap polarity, but it requires a little bit more work. Let's back up to when we took the fan out of our inventory. Once again, we'll use Ultra Hand to rotate it into position, again with the blades facing Link and the broomstick bristles pointing upward. This time, we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of letting go with Ultra Hand and setting the fan down, we're going to keep it levitated there and move it as close to Link as possible. Now, make sure that you keep some space between the fan and the ground, and then from there switch to recall. You can recall the fan, quickly walk Link forward and grab it out of the air, and it'll cause it to flip the same way every time. The reason this works is that since we're holding the fan up in the air using Ultra Hand, and then we grab it out of the air before it can touch the ground, the ground doesn't influence its starting orientation, which makes the rotation deterministic when we pick it up. In the case of fans, using this method, you should see it do a back roll every time, from which you can attach your substrate to the back of the fan to continue with your launch. 
That being said, it is worth noting that I still occasionally get a front roll with this method. It's not 100% consistent, but I would say it's above 90. I just felt that it was worth noting in case it happens to you. So, unless you have a very well-trained eye, this is probably the best option you have to get a consistent OCO launch. The other thing worth noting about this method is that while fans will produce a back roll every time, most other OCOs will produce a front roll from what I've seen. Which direction you'll get depends on which object you're using and you'll need to find it out for yourself. Nonetheless, I highly recommend learning this method. It's not too difficult and it'll help make every OCO launch more consistent. As you will see in the future, fans are not the most powerful OCO. We have things like batteries, cannons, and mirrors, which snap so quickly into Link's hands that you have very little chance of judging them correctly with your eyes, making this one of the only ways we have of getting consistent launches out of them. Special thanks to my friend, fellow recall researcher, and the current recall launch world record holder, Vector, for informing me about this technique. I really appreciate how accessible it's made the recall launch. So anyway, with all that being said, now that we have figured out the rotation part of the OCO launch, surely all that's left to do is attach the plank, recall the fan, stand near the end of the plank, and launch, right? Well, once again, actually no. There is just one more problem that we must solve. To those who have attempted this before, let me ask you a question. Ever had this happen to you? That disappointing effect is known as a lag stop. Everything looks like it's going well, but Link just sort of loses all of his momentum right after the launch commences. I think this happens because the game wants to keep Link connected to the plank as it rotates, or maybe we hit some kind of speed limit, but I'm still not 100% sure. Either way, we want to prevent this from bothering us by separating Link from the plank at the appropriate moment. I know of two ways to avoid lag stop. The first is by jumping either slightly before or exactly during the precise moment that the substrate begins to flick upward. Similarly to the case with the Paracopter, for whatever reason if Link is in the air when the substrate collides with him, the launch will work as expected. This takes some practice timing, but it isn't too terrible. And on that note, let's talk about timing. Because this is a recall launch, you have total control over how much time occurs between events as the fan is recalled. The timing for the trick is literally written into the history of the OCO as you set up the launch. Knowing this, we can make our lives easier. As a general rule, always, always mash A when picking up the OCO so that you will put it down as soon as possible. Not only does this help some with the timing, but for certain OCOs, this cleans up the animation a bit, removing unwanted rotation about other axes. More on that in part 2. If you mash A to put the fan down right after you picked it up, then when you recall the fan later, the fan will rise, then immediately drop right before the launch goes off. By mashing A, you make this timing consistent, giving you more warning to input the jump at the correct time. Ultimately, it's up to you how to figure this out for yourself, but this is what worked best for me. With that being said, we have another way to avoid lag stop, having Link be moving when the launch commences. You can do this by pushing the left stick in whichever direction you want, just as the plank begins to flip upward. Crouching makes this quite a bit easier as Link moves a lot slower, making it less likely for you to accidentally walk the plank. Nonetheless, my advice earlier about bashing A to put down the OCO as soon as possible still applies here. It's just a good idea to make the timing consistent for yourself and there isn't really a reason not to. I've found crouch walking to give better launch consistency, but the jump method can occasionally give you launches that are significantly more powerful than usual if timed perfectly. It's up to you which method you prefer. Crouch walking is probably the easier choice for beginners. At this point, I've now set forth all the information on the table. You now know everything you need to about how to perform an OCO launch, but I spread that information over the past 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and put it all together. I'm going to show you footage of a couple real launches and describe what's happening. First, I'll show you the launch without any commentary in real time, and then I'll go over it with commentary and slow it down as needed.
We begin with our wooden plank substrate and fan in front of us. Now the fan's in a weird position so we're going to pick it up and put it down to reset it to its default orientation and then flip it over using Ultra Hand. From there, we can quickly look at it from the side and then mash A to pick it up and put it down as soon as possible while making careful note of which way it rolls. I noticed that I got a front roll this time, so I went ahead and attached the plank to the front of the fan and then recalled it. From there, as the recall timer begins to run out, we position Link at the other end of the plank and then watch as it rises and then falls. And right after it's done falling, I input my jump right as the plank begins moving and we get a very nice launch. If you carefully watch my Z coordinate during the launch, you see that I moved Link upwards about 290 meters, which is pretty typical for a fan plank OCO launch. Let's go ahead and move on to example 2. So this time, I start with the plank in front of me, but instead of grabbing a fan from my surroundings, I just get one out of my inventory. I grab it with Ultra Hand, rotate it 4 times to the right, and then 4 times downward, and move it as close to Link as possible. From there, I use Recall on the fan, and then mash A to grab it out of the air and set it down as quickly as possible. Since I grabbed the fan out of Recall, I'm confident that I got a back roll, so this time we attach the plank to the back of the fan. From there, I recall it again, get Link into position, and crouch. Once again, after I see the plank rise and then fall, I know that's my cue, so I push the left control stick right when it starts moving, and Link once again gets launched into the air. Finally, to finish out the move, I pull out a mid-air wing to get over to a floating island. At this point, you finally know enough to start performing your own OCO launches. If you carefully follow the instructions in this video, you should be able to use the fan plank method to reliably launch Link 300 meters upwards. Now, before I end the video, I do have a couple takeaway things that I want you to keep in mind. First off, do not despair if this takes a few attempts to learn. The script for this video was over 2500 words long. There's a lot to consider here and it takes some time to make all the neural connections. I'm the pioneer of this technique and I'm still learning new things about it. Just don't give up and feel free to come back to this video as many times as it takes until you figure out everything. I promise, once you understand all of the points laid out here, you can perform this trick with a near 100% consistency rate. Second of all, I encourage you to be brave and try out some other OCO substrate combos. This video is really just the tip of the iceberg. Once you've mastered the fan, in terms of OCOs, I recommend checking out batteries, cannons, and mirrors because they are very snappy and powerful. With careful positioning, I can often get close to 800 meters out of these devices, but I've occasionally gotten super launches that compare to the Paracopter. For substrates, try messing around with wings and this large lattice from the Ihen A shrine near Mifa. If I can find some time, I'll talk about more OCOs and substrates in part 2. Stick around for that if you are interested. Finally, before I end this video, there are, as always, a couple of people who helped me out along the way and I want to extend to them my special thanks. The first on this list is Banoon, who sent me a bunch of different 3D models from the game's files. It would have been a lot harder to show you guys the concept of snap polarity if I weren't able to do so in a 3D space. She also wanted me to know that she is the main researcher for the channel Moxie Watts, and so I will therefore be linking both in the description. Finally, although I've already mentioned him in this video, I wanted to extend my special thanks to Vector, who has been doing a ton of great research with Recall, and I really think that if you guys like what I do, you would like what he does as well.
I have already mentioned some of his contributions to the recall launch in this part and you'll probably see him again in part 2. Until then, happy launching and as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.